In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the operation of a General Electric time overcurrent relay. This is a model 121AC77 relay. Its job is to detect time overcurrent conditions and to trip a large circuit breaker if the current exceeds a certain preset value for a certain amount of time. This is what's called an induction disk style of relay. We have an aluminum disk inside of here, very much like the round disk you see in a um, uh, watt meter, as you might find on a resonance for measuring electrical power. This disk is rotated by a magnetic field that comes from current, that comes from a current transformer in a three-phase power system. So looking back at our simple schematic, we're measuring current through one of the three-phase wires here with the current transformer. That lower signal comes out, goes over into the protective relay, and drives the coil inside that relay. And when the magnetic field goes to the, or is generated by that coil, it generates a torque on that aluminum disc, on the induction disc. It's very much like the rotor of an induction motor. The stronger the current is, the more torque is generated on the disc. That disc is then rotated against the tension of a uh, spiral spring and also against the drag of a magnet here. And what happens is when that disc rotates far enough, there's a metal peg, which you can see right there, a little metal peg. And that metal peg comes over and touches that contact. It closes the switch and that will send the trip power to the circuit breaker to tell it to open. So again, back to our diagram. Our step-down line current is sensed here, goes into the protective relay. When that disc travels far enough, it closes that contact, sending 125 volt DC power to the trip coil of the circuit breaker, telling the circuit breaker to trip. So, back to our relay. <clears throat> if I take the disc and manually rotate it by hand until that small peg comes in contact with the stationary unit. We see over here when I reach that point, I have a light come on. I have this uh, LED connected in series with a battery and with that uh, contact on the protective relay. So as I move the disc, I can make the light come on. Again, if there's enough current going through the induction coil to torque this disc over clockwise, that peg will touch the stationary contact. I'll get a closure of the circuit that would, in real life, send 125 volt DC power to the trip coil of a circuit breaker, causing it to trip and to open. So I'm going to demonstrate how this works. To simulate its operation in a real power system, I have it connected to a circuit whereby I can vary the amount of AC current going through the induction coil. <clears throat> Over here I've got a meter that's registering the voltage dropped across a small shunt resistor. That shunt resistor has a 1 amp to 1 millivolt ratio. So for every amp of AC current going to the induction coil, I'll read one millivolt of voltage. Right now I'm reading 0.35 millivolts, means I have 0.35 amps AC going through that shunt. So, back to here, I'm going to vary the current. I'm going to increase my power supply. So 0.4 amps, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1.1 amps, 1.3 amps, 1.4 amps. If I look at this disk, I will notice it is not rotating. There's no motion at the disk at all. I am passing current through that induction coil. It is generating a torque on the disk, but that torque is not enough to exceed the restraining torque of that spiral spring. So unless the current exceeds a certain preset value, we'll not begin to move that disk at all. That value is called the pickup value. I need to exceed the pickup value of current before I'll start to move the disk at all. So here I'll start to increase the current. 1.2 amps, 1.3, 1.6, 2.5, 2.6, 3.0. Still no rotation of the disc. I'm going to jump up a little bit higher here just to show you the rotation. We'll go up to about 4 amps right there, and you can see that disc start to move. You can see the motion of that disc, the edge of that wheel, that induction wheel, start to turn around. And as it does so, it is bringing that peg closer and closer to the stationary contact. We're about 4.6 amps right now. I'm going to increase the current even more. You'll see the wheel spin faster. You can see it rotate quite rapidly now. And very soon it will contact and turn on the light. There we go, and the light is on. So when I turn the current off, we've gone to about a half an amp right now. The restraining torque of that spring is bringing the wheel back to its resting position. Now the logic behind this design is as follows. We are going to tell the circuit breaker in the power system to trip if the current exceeds that pickup value 
for a certain length of time. And we want that certain length of time to become shorter the higher the overcurrent condition is. So for example, a 200% overcurrent condition is going to take longer to trip than a 300% overcurrent condition. This is not the sort of uh, trip setting where it just immediately exceeds a threshold and instantaneously trips. That would be a different function. This is a time overcurrent relay, and so we're concerned with how much time it takes for this thing to trip based on how much of an overcurrent condition we have. So once again, to demonstrate, I'll pull the focus of the camera back. We've got about a half amp AC going through it right now, which is well below the pickup value. Our disc is sitting in the resting position. I can increase the current to my relay. As I do so, it's putting more torque on the disc. I can see the disc is starting to move very slowly. At this point, it's going to take quite a while before that peg actually comes over and touches the contact. So this is a, simulating a mild overcurrent condition. It's going to take quite a while before it tells the circuit breaker to trip. If I turn the current back down and I fall below the pickup value, right here I'm about 3.8 amps, and if I look at the disc right here, it isn't quite uh, returning to its position, so I go, need to go lower. There we go. How about 2.9 amps. Now if I look at the disc, I can see the disc actually moving backwards. The peg is now moving away from the contact because I've fallen below the pickup value. It's now returning to the restraint position. So a time overcurrent relay, often referred to in the industry as a 51 relay, the ANSI IEEE standard codes for identifying protective functions identifies 51 as a time overcurrent function. So this is a 51 relay. And when it does trip in real life, when that peg touches that contact, instead of just getting an LED to turn on, remember what it's doing in real life is sending 125 volt power to the trip coil of the circuit breaker to tell that large circuit breaker to trip. Also when that happens, it will energize this flag and we will get an orange indicator telling us the trip has occurred that can be reset with that lever. And this relay unit is called a seal-in unit. Even a momentary contact uh, on that peg will cause this to latch and seal in so that if we have just a, a brief contact right there, it's still enough to maintain trip power to our circuit breaker to positively shut it off and not just blip it with power, but actually hold it power on it long enough to ensure a trip event. That's a quick introduction to General Electric time overcurrent relay, often referred to as a 51 relay.